Okay, so painting some Claymore Castings English Archers for the Hundred Years' War. I say Claymore Castings. There's, uh, <laughs> there's one chap here who's a, a front-ranked chap, but I wanted him to uh, be saluting his French counterparts as they come towards him. Anyway, but yes, so stage one, clean up all the flash off um, from the metal moulds. Um, in the case of any that might require some assembly, make sure that's done, like... Uh, this chap here and this fellow here needed their bow arms glued on. Anything like that, clean the flash and put them on some stands ready for painting. I... Okay, stage two, priming. Now, the colour your primer model, model I should say, um, depends entirely on your painting style and uh, your preference and also, to a certain extent, um, the colour the model's going to end up being. Now... I use quite a few um, Citadel contrast paints and also a lot of medieval models just wearing plain light earthy colours with the occasional livery coat. So um, I'm a big fan of the Citadel Wraithbone Primer, this one here, that I've used on most of these guys. However, with the case of these two chaps here, where they're mostly armour, um, I've uh, undercoated with black. And next stage, stage three, a cheap bit of pre-shading. Obviously, it doesn't apply to the uh, chaps sprayed in black there. But um, yes, it's our friend and yours, Agrax Earth Aid, otherwise known as Liquid Skill. So yes, just move that one out of the way. Yeah, just a quick uh, squidge over the models with the um, Agrax Earth Shade. In fact, some areas of the model, depending on the sort of cloth it is that you're trying to portray, can be left as the colour that um, you get when you wash Agrax over uh, the wraith bone. But yeah. And there's the next stage done. In this instance, what I've done is just take a run at anything metal or armour, you know, the helmets, spear or arrow tips, I should say, and um, any sword hilts, or in the case of these two chaps here, the armour and the chainmail. So yeah, that's quick bit now. Next up will be a sort of wood, leather straps and flesh. Right, here we go. We've got the uh, appreciating everything done like you saw on the previous stage. And now we've had all the metal done, the armour, the flesh, the wood on the uh, arrow shafts and the bows and the leather on the um, straps, scabbards, bags, and shoes. Um, from now on in, it's pretty much a matter of what colours you want to paint them, whether it's the livery of their lord or just some basic rough and ready clothing type colours. So um, I won't do it stage by stage from now on. I'll just show you what they're like when they're finished or just before the final details. But uh, yeah, that's uh, this is the sort of stage I take them to in terms of batch painting, and then I perhaps take a more individual approach. And after not a lot of painting effort later, here we are with the models all glued to the base, ready for some basing material to be added. Um, yeah, quite a simple paint scheme, very quick to do. Mostly Games Workshop contrast paints with a couple of other odds and sods chucked in for good measure, but not a lot. Um, I decided against using the second nearly all armour um, standard bearer figure I was going to use and I found a spare archer figure that I'd lost the archer bow arm for that I'm using as a casualty there. Um, but yeah, I think that's come out alright. Now ready to apply some basing bits and pieces and I'll take you through how I do that. The first part is to add some PVA glue to the bases and then douse the bases liberally in this so um, that forms the basic ground texture. Now this is um, a bit of a mixture. Um, got the idea from uh, Luke's APS or Geek Gaming Services, whatever he's called these days. Um, basically this is made up of, for the most part, dirt from my back garden that's been baked and then ground and sieved, plus uh, a little bit of um, brown tile grout, some dark earth weathering powder, I forget the manufacturer, and dried coffee grounds. I think there was a bit of brown flock chucked in for good measure, but it's about 
60-70% earth from the back garden and then the rest all amongst that lot I just mentioned. But anyway, there it all is. Mix it up. And like I say, we'll get some PVA glue and apply it to that. And there you go, one bit of gluing and dipping later. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a nice foundation on those bases. Took no time at all. So just gonna let that dry, probably overnight. It's way past my bedtime now anyway. <laughs> and then the next step, once that's dry, will be to add some, some of the contents of my trusty tub of uh, tufts there. And then once that's done, add a few bits of flock and grass and sides. Anyway, that's coming up next. And there we go with a few tufts added. Glue down in appropriate spots for super glue. And now just waiting to that to dry, for that to dry. And then the fin finishing touches of uh, the flag over here and some normal grass in amongst the tufts. Back in a sec. And here we are with my trusty bit of uh, undergrowth flock and these guys ready to be based. Um, this actually is just a mixture of um, various lengths worth of static grass, some foam type flock, some uh, some leaf type scatter material and some bog standard old fashioned flock as well, all mixed up. Quite often when I get to the bottom of um, a jar, I'll just tip what's left into it into here. And uh, when I've done some flocking and there's bits sort of left over, I sort of make sure it all goes back in there. But it's, it's, it's a good mix and it just looks like good general undergrowth. So right, here we go. And there it all is done and dusted with the addition of a Flags of Wall flag. I think they've come out quite well. As you can see, that ground covering does the job nicely in amongst all the, uh, the initial base and the tufts I added. So yes, there you go. I hope you found that informative. It's by no means a Bible of how to paint English arches in the Hundred Years' War. It's just how I do it. Um, any queries or comments, um, put them in the comments below. I'll leave you with a little turntable of um, this at the end of the video. And I'll also put uh, all the paints I used in the description below. But otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. And uh, more videos coming soon. Cheers.